What is hidden from our eyes? Curiosity leads to knowledge and progress. Searching for other lands, looking out into immeasurable depths of the universe or down into the depth of matter brings discoveries and inventions changing our lives. These are among the reasons why scientists from the Institute of Physical Chemistry of the Polish Academy of Sciences in Warsaw are doing research on objects inaccessible to the human eye. From a micro droplet down to single molecules and the nanoscale, so at the level thousands times smaller than the diameter of the human hair, they look for solutions to problems that are important to each of us. Nowadays, scientists know millions of chemical reactions. They are able to make use of them in the industrial scale and to explain what's going on inside living organisms. We know what is happening in a laboratory flask. Traditional analytic methods allow for monitoring behavior of billions of billions of molecules. But what about the behavior of single molecules? The studies on single molecules are possible thanks to the fluorescent spectroscopy. Using laser light and ultra-sensitive detectors, we can record very small light-emitting spots. Here, each of them corresponds to a single fluorescing molecule placed in a polymer film. Single molecule studies allow for monitoring chemical reactions and complex processes in living organisms. Using single molecule spectroscopy, we see real molecules as they are, without averaging their behavior. What can be found on the surface of solids? For many years, chemists have been able to analyze it. Unfortunately, the analytic operations and procedures usually result in a change of the surface. Such studies can be performed in a non-destructive fashion using a photoelectron spectrometer. A monochromatic X-ray beam ejects electrons from atoms on the surface of the sample. Measuring the energy of these electrons allows one to determine the chemical composition. Using a beam of argon ions, one can also get an insight of what is hidden beneath the surface. In future, the research may lead up to fabrication of films protecting metals against corrosion even in chemical industry. But will our ability to protect electrodes against corrosion translate into low-cost capabilities of manufacturing hydrogen for future car technologies? Will we be using clean and low-cost hydrogen fuel? Today, hydrogen-fueled cars run experimentally on restricted access tracks, and when they will enter our daily lives? Safe hydrogen storage is one of the problems still remaining to be solved. The researchers from the Institute of Physical Chemistry are studying materials that are capable of storing massive amounts of hydrogen in their structure. They crush matter using diamond anvils. Exposed to laser light under a pressure of thousands of bars, the samples reveal their unusual properties. Bacterial infections have been a problem for years. Bacterial strains entirely resistant to antibiotics can be found even in hospitals. How such resistance is being developed? In the laboratory of the Institute of Physical Chemistry, researchers prepare bacteria together with suitable medium and an antibiotic to be tested. With sterile syringes, these substances are transferred into a microfluidic system that is subsequently placed at the temperature of 37 centigrade. The valves and microfluidic system produce droplets with a volume of one microliter, each containing the same portion of bacteria and antibiotic at various concentrations. This solution allows for simultaneous testing of how the bacteria respond to different antibiotic concentrations. By monitoring the behavior of bacteria with a camera, we are able to determine how a given strain acquires resistance to antibiotics. In a few years, the study may provide answers to questions about the detailed mechanism of bacterial infection and about the concentrations of antibiotics that should be used to effectively fight it. Blood typing is necessary before every surgical operation or transfusion. The procedure must be reliable and fast and must require little amounts of blood. 
For years, the researchers at the Institute of Physical Chemistry have been studying microscopic droplets moving in tiny channels. Their speed depends not only on their size, but also on the viscosity of the liquid. It is known that agglutination results in dramatic change of blood viscosity. A droplet containing such a blood will move slower than the one where the process did not take place. A polycarbonate plate with grooved microchannels forms a device where droplets containing blood cells and monoclonal regions used by serological laboratories move in a controlled way. The droplets meet and merge with each other by application of a voltage. If an antigen meets its specific antibody, they form a complex and it results in a change of the droplet speed. The researchers are able to measure the change with high accuracy. Using the method, the blood group can be determined and serological testing can be quickly performed prior to a blood transfusion. Two independent and very fast methods for determination of antigenes in blood have been developed. Only microliters or hundredth parts of a droplet are needed for testing. How to fabricate a tube that is many times thinner than a human hair? A glass capillary is placed inside a hot coil of wire. By adjusting the stretching force to the temperature of the glass, one can fabricate pipettes with a hole diameter even thousand times less than the diameter of a hair. Such super-thin tubes are used in an electrochemical microscope. The device can be used to determine the rates of chemical reactions. The reactions occur on the surface of a solid remaining in contact with a liquid or at the interface between two immiscible liquids. A probe in such a microscope is a micro or nano electrode that is fabricated as shown just before. Each of us may be concerned about ill health in latter years. Even greater is fear of falling to Parkinson's disease. This neurological disorder is characterized by deficiency of one of neurotransmitters, the dopamine. Microfluidic devices may be helpful in diagnosing the disease. Small cross-sections of microchannels provide good conditions for maintaining laminar flow of minute amounts of blood. The substances contained in the liquid can be detected with a higher accuracy. The electrode allows for selective determination of the dopamine content. What is happening on the electrode surface? Here we see silver microparticles deposited on a semiconductor material. These unique images are provided by atomic force microscopy. The sample is placed under a sharp tip hanging on an elastic cantilever. Under the action of an electric field, the crystal changes its shape, which results in a movement of the tiny beam. The tested electrode can be used for studies of catalytic reactions or for detection of substances in liquids. Which microorganisms have bred on the medium? Harmful or useful? For many years, researchers have been looking for methods for fast and reliable identification of bacteria. Such methods would stimulate further development of microbiology, molecular biology, and biomedical diagnostics. Low-cost, non-complicated, fast methods are of particular interest. Would the surface-enhanced Raman spectroscopy prove as a method of choice? The Raman effect is based on scattering of light by molecules. The results obtained with the technique are different for different bacterial species. Each species has its unique pattern. Will the researchers from the Institute contribute to the development of a new diagnostic method? How to make an ultra-thin film of a chemical compound? It can be made using a small apparatus called Langmuir balance. These thin films can be deposited on suitable substrates in a controlled way. In doing so, one can fabricate components of various devices. In this example, a monolayer of an appropriately modified porphyrin is being deposited on the aqueous layer in a Langmuir balance. Due to optical properties of the substance, it can be seen by naked eye as a color film on the surface of water. The emerging thin film will be a component of a photovoltaic cell that allows for conversion of sunlight directly into electricity. Photosynthesis is the most widespread chemical process on Earth used by all green plants. Chlorophyll contained in cells absorbs photons of sunlight. In a chain of transformations, the energy from primarily excited molecules is transferred by electrons to molecules called energy carriers. The product of the photosynthesis is a sugar, glucose, that is the main source of energy needed by plants for development and growth. 
For years, chemists have been able to construct solar cells that approximately mimic the transformations in plants. No more is needed than raspberry juice and a plate coated with titanium dioxide dipped in an electrolyte. Another electrode is the black suit from a smoking candle. An intense beam of light allows for generation of electricity. Can we succeed in increasing the process efficiency? Can mankind be provided with an inexhaustible and clean source of energy? Plants set a good example. Windows changing color on pressing a button instead of curtains or roller blinds? Windows changing their color depending on our will? A number of materials are known that in future may allow for realization of such expectations. It is enough to coat an appropriately modified glass with a polymer film, dip it in a solution and pass electric current through such a system. When the polymer is being oxidized by application of a voltage, the whole film darkens and finally becomes dark blue. If we reverse polarization of a battery that provides power supply to the system and start to reduce the material, the polymer film lightens, returning to its natural orange color. The entire cycle can be repeated many times and the color the material assumes under different conditions can be controlled by changing chemical structure of the polymer. How to clean building facades and car windows, quickly and at low cost. Researchers worldwide have for years been working on how to make use of titanium white, or in other words, titanium dioxide. In the presence of the pigment in laboratory conditions, light stimulates, for instance, the decolorization of a liquid. Titanium dioxide is not consumed in such reactions. Another problem is the disposal of pollutions coming from biomass and wood industry. The scientists from the Institute of Physical Chemistry are doing research on new technologies. Photocatalytic cleaning of water is a promising method allowing simultaneously for production of desirable chemicals. The processes take place at room temperature. Due to application of appropriately prepared photocatalysts, the pollutants are transformed into chemicals used in drug manufacturing and in the food industry. More and more screens, television sets, laptops, tablets, and mobile phones. State-of-the-art screens make use of fluorescence and longer-lived phosphorescence. Emission of visible light excited by invisible ultraviolet radiation has been known for long. The phenomenon is used to protect banknotes and important documents, but also to give a snow-white color to linen. In the research, luminescence is used primarily as a source of information about the microstructure of the emitting objects. No wonder luminescent substances are studied in many laboratories, not only in Poland. Allegedly, the most difficult problem is the white light. Usually, the white light is produced by mixing differently colored components. The researchers at the Institute of Physical Chemistry look for substances capable of emitting white light. Here, the white is really white and allows for creation of beautiful, long-lasting effects. When exposed to ultraviolet radiation, chemicals emit light of various colors. After covering the ultraviolet lamp, short-lived green fluorescence disappears immediately, and red phosphorescence stays for longer. In this case, both emissions come from products of complex chemical transformations taking place in the sample in trillionth parts of a second. That's why we observe radiation colored differently than that of initially excited substrates. Analysis of the red emission provides information about unusual phenomena taking place in the excited states of molecules. Will a deeper understanding of these phenomena contribute to the development of television screens producing more beautiful images? Nanoparticles, tiny objects thousand times smaller than a grain of sand, are changing the world. Unfortunately, production of nanoparticles may generate waste composed of particles sized in the range of billionth parts of a meter. Is it safe or harmful? More than 2,200 years ago, the first emperor of China wanted to be immortal. He ordered to build the Great Wall to protect the empire against the barbarians and to prepare a super drug. For seven years, he was taking capsules containing nano impurities in the form of mercury. Finally, the emperor wigged out and died. His tomb is until today guarded by the great terracotta army. What conclusion can we draw from the story? Nano impurities or nano pollutants are really dangerous for the human body. How can we cope with them? These particles cannot be stopped by any filter. 
Polish scientists patented a method for removing these pollutants from the environment. These film images show it looks easy. Weighing a substance, blending with polymer, this is the white powder, and test. The solution contains an added agent to reduce surface tension. The solution separates into two layers. One of them is enriched with impurities and can be easily removed mechanically. This is the patent of police scientists. The world invisible to the unaided eye hides infinite opportunities. The researchers from the Institute of Physical Chemistry discover new phenomena. They study the properties of matter. They create unique materials. Their work finds applications in our daily lives.